Okay, I just want to do another update. <clears throat> now, some of these have kind of interesting meanings only to me. <clears throat> some may be a little obvious. Um, of course, the addition to this is the... I'm going to get closer to this, some of these. And I'm still going to go into these and add more detail. These are still 70 to 80%. Um, but did go into this a little bit more and just added uh, <laughs> kind of a reaction to the fire breathing dragon and uh, also added some fish that I really think are beautiful. They will still take some more detail. Redid this, um, added a little bit more red, worked on the Drop shadows. I may go in there with a, a kneaded eraser and just dab the shadows a little bit. I think they're a little too strong. Um, now, this is probably the only creature <laughs> in here that is just done for the just the mere beauty and majestic qualities of nature. Um, another sea dragon, but when you see it flowing in the currents and everything's moving, it's just whoosh, magnificent. Now, um, added some monarch butterflies. Now, this is going to be an intentional um, reason. <clears throat> now, I do have a fondness of butterflies in nature. And these will be on purpose of just being very light, almost see-through. And that is the finished product. They will not be detailed. Um, to represent that we've lost 80 to 90% of the monarch butterflies through construction and the destroying of their habitat. So these will be really super light. Uh, like they're unfinished and I will put numbers in here um, like maybe 65, 75, 85 on these like a brand showing the progression of our destruction of an amazing creature something that defies all logic the generation of the monarch, monarch butterfly to go from Canada to Michoacan in Mexico on the Day of the Dead in multiple journeys from multiple generations of this butterfly without knowing the, <laughs> the journey of the one before. And each time they lay another egg, it takes on another journey. And then the last uh, journey is going, the generation has hatched and developed in Michoacan, makes the long journey back to Canada without the knowledge of how it got there. And the, the journey continues. Anyway, it's, it's, it's one of the most unbelievable journeys of nature. And I'm going to stop this here. Okay, so this is a long shot. Um, I'm going to zoom down. Did a lot more corrections, added more detail, worked on the fire, worked on the cactus and the seahorses. And I add a new sea dragon. Uh, I need to tone down the, still, need to tone down the uh, shadows on the insect. Uh, went into the flower a little bit more, I'll be adding more layers. Now, um, what I'm working on right now is the monarch butterfly. And um, if you notice, it's very dark and rich. And you can see the 
the color's fading. And then there's this one that's even lighter. Still some pieces are dark, getting lighter and lighter, um, blending away. And then there's this one. Um, and this one is the one I'm going to be working on. It's going to be even a lighter um, gray, almost translucent. So if it's close to this other one, I'm going to pull it and pull some of the color out so it even gets lighter. And this represents what's happening to the monarch butterflies. Over the years, uh, their habitat has been destroyed and this is an example of 60% of it or 60% of or 65% of the monarch butterflies disappearing. This is 75% of the monarch butterflies and this will be 85% of the monarch butterflies disappearing. So maybe they will not exist in my lifetime. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but you never know. Anyway, I just wanted to show the progress on the latest piece. Okay, so I did a lot more work. Uh, giant yellow orb spider over here. Uh, I'm going to do more stuff in there. I'm going to do a little demonstration on the leafy sea dragon. Now, this is kind of um, somewhat of a foundation. Um, I will add way more detail, but that takes so much time that I can't do it in a short video. So I'm going to probably come in a little bit. And then do a kind of a nice demo. So um, what I'm going to do is hopefully I can give somewhat of a, a little demo on this. I'm just blocking things in, um, looking for little teeny things I can improve on, blend in where I can. Now this is somewhat detailed but it's still just a foundation. I will add more highlights and make it more three dimensional. I'm going to... A little bit more of a number in some areas. Um, I'm hoping that to let it bleed in. Now this has more of a a little bit of a greenish tint on the outskirts. Now again, like I said, this is, and I just gave a little bit of a foundation on some of these, and I'm going 10 times faster than I would normally because I'm trying to use this as a demo, and I could still go back in there and do little corrections if I need to trying to account for the speed. Um, let's see. So between the umbers and the little green tints, and like I emphasized before, th this is detailed but not 
like a hardcore scientific illustration. This is scientific because I am following a, an existing real creature, but trying to, if I was to do it in a scientific mode, <laughs> this face or this head would probably take me <laughs> Um, a day or so or more trying to get every single detail in there uh, and as I mentioned before I am not at the museum and I am just painting for my pleasure so if it doesn't come out exact exact that's not gonna bother me anymore I'm not going to have some uh, PhD telling me, oh, well, you missed this little crevice and crack or whatever. Or, you know, you're going to have to redo that, and um, this needs an improvement. This size is not, I guess you could say, to code. <laughs> so, uh, like I right now, I'm having more fun painting um, than I ever have, mainly because... I'm just having fun. Now you can see I'm going back into some of these other little things here. And that's the way things work. I just kind of keep going over an existing sea life or illustration that I've done. And then I will put on magnified glasses and go in there for the small, tiny little detail that is pretty much naked to the, the eye and blend things out and and when it's blown up you'll see little teeny things that are off. Um, even when you, if you're looking at it on a TV you'll notice that um, you'll see little things but you're looking at it under magnification so you're looking at like pretty much under magnifying glass so you will see things on TV or on a computer that will not show up um, when you're looking at it just straight on but then that's the way I paint I use magnification um, let's see Anyway, um, so I'm kind of just looking for little tiny inclusions. Let's see how we are on time. Wow, that went fast. Okay, I'm just going to do a couple of more little things here and then stop it. This is just for demonstration purposes. And like I said, I'm going a lot faster than I would normally. So I'll go back in here and redo stuff and tighten up things. Um, I'm just going to try to see if I can do a little bit of the the gill factor and then I'll stop. So the gills are pretty much in the back here. Okay, you barely see that. Now this is using the white, so which means I'll have to go over it several times. So it shows up. I mean, you can see a little bit of a white there. Anyway, so I'm going to stop there and do another 
little demo on the other side uh, of a golden orb spider. Um, and then after I do that, I'm getting close to maybe 80%. And at the 80% level, I am looking for a small little detail. So then I'll be under magnified glasses and look for all the little tiny things that no one can really see. So I'm just going to bring in a little bit more of a... So you can see kind of what I'm talking about. And the body right in here will definitely require a lot more work. Shading, highlights. Anyway, that's the sea dragon, leafy sea dragon. Okay, so this is the golden orb. Um, now I can't go through all of this insect, well, arachnid, but I'm just going to give you kind of an idea how I did this. So you can see the legs here, so I'm using an orange, and I'm kind of just placing a corner. I'm going to add a little bit down here, a little bit more down here, and uh, come in with a light orange. Now I don't know what kind of oranges you have, but uh, there's a variety. And I'm going to come in close. And maybe come in here and touch this. And this will bleed. Now I'm going to see if I can get in a little closer. So now I'm going to come in here and touch them. Just to get a nice little blend. Again, I have to emphasize that I am going 10 times faster than I would normally go, mainly because of the time element. Um, so I'm not going to get too close to that, but I'm going to just give it a little touch. And then I'm going to come in here, and it, this is the way it's going to look on the edges. It's going to have these little teeny points, but it does, does it has a little feathering on this. So I'm going to come from this other side. This may be a little too wet still, but right in here in the joints, I'll come in with some stuff like this. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a touch. These Asian brushes are just magnificent. I have a lot of brushes that have very fine points, but the point on these, I can see that get super fine. Um, now I did go over the joints here a little bit with an outline, which is definitely too strong, so I'm going to blend that out. And this is kind of what I do. Um, I'll look for little teeny areas that need my attention, that don't look right to me. Um, blend it. Now at this point I can't really tell where the corrections should be because I'm looking at it just through my normal vision. It isn't until I go in there and actually look under magnification where I will see little inclusions. Now you can see there's a little bit of a highlight right there and that's what, what I normally do. Um, 
I see something that I like, which is this, like right here. So I kind of add that to others. And um, this gives it more of a nice value change. And gives it a nice blend. So sometimes it requires going in several times because it is wet so it'll try to retract back to I just kind of slowly come in on a little smaller spot to do the highlight. Okay, so um, that's kind of the demonstration on the golden orb. Uh, they have not like the standard webbing. Um, it's really erratic. And they're not like the, the way you normally see them. I mean, you see, you know, this way, this way, and you see it kind of. And spiders do that. And uh, <clears throat> they're fascinating creatures like all nature. Um, some actually have like a little Teflon Teflon pad that they walk on their web so that they don't get stuck. But there are some, <laughs> this is how clever nature is, they can control the stickiness of their web. So when you see some that are running out this way or this way or crisscross this way, they will make some of them non-sticky and the other one sticky. So they can run along the non-sticky, which they would know. So um, anyway, fascinating creature. Hello, um, I'm Steve Melendres, a model maker, illustrator, scientific illustrator, sculptor, design after history museum in Los Angeles. Done a lot of different things, um, but I'm going to be doing watercolor demonstrations of the techniques I've developed over the years. Um, and it's going to go from a lot of different directions. And also I'm going to be doing videos. Uh, I call them video posters for my daughter. So a lot of stuff that I can leave to my daughter about her crazy dad. <laughs> so um, I'm taking a lot of different directions, but mainly three. Um, so anyway, that's my introduction that I'm going to attach to every thing I'm doing now so I don't have to repeat this. Be careful out there.